Welcome to another edition of Cruise Control Extreme. First, we're going to take you up to Z-Max for the four wide Spring Nationals where we got to talk to some of the drivers. Then we're going to go back to our shop, continue working on that 64 Malibu project, as well as showing you some products that you can use on your car at home. Then we're going to come back to the Red Robin and the Cruise Control Cruise In, show you some amazing vehicles. So stay tuned, Cruise Control will be right back. This segment brought to you by, for the highest quality in car restoration, think Steel Rubber Products, SteelRubber.com. Call now 1 800 650 6189. For service and integrity since 1976, it's the National Parts Depot. Visit online npdlink.com. Order today. For all your radio and communication needs, go to racingelectronics.com. We use quantum towing for all our towing needs. Call 980-328-4160. This is Fast Jack Beckman, and when I'm not going 300 in that, I'm watching Cruise Control TV. Good evening, folks. I'm Ryan here at 3SX Performance Automotive. Are you looking for a custom automobile, motorcycle, hot rod, import? Come on down and see us. Don't take a chance, folks, on the Internet and the bidding sites. Come see the professionals here at 3SX Performance Automotive. From imports to American muscle, folks, we got everything you need right here at 3SX Performance Automotive. And all of our inventory here is certified hot rod ready by our ASC certified service department. Call us at 704-786-7866 or visit us on the web at www.3sxcars.com. 3SX Performance Automotive, when getting from A to B just isn't enough. Hey boys and girls and blokes, I'm at Carolina, you pull in Rock Hill where you pull the parts yourself to save money. Come with me now, we found some wild beasts. Well boy, you find everything you need here, perfect vehicle for a safari, and look at here, I got a wild Mustang. Look at what we found here, Thunderbird. He's an Impala, he's got some great parts. Here Carolina, you pull in Rock Hill, there's bugs all over the place here. Get off of me, would you? Ain't no matter what you call, they got the part right here, Carolina Sandwich, Carolina, you pull it in Rock Hill. We're here at ZMAX Dragway for the NHRA Four Wide Nationals. Let's go talk to some drivers. I'd like to welcome Jack Beckham back to Cruise Control Extreme. Pleasure to be here, guys. Glad and for you. a great cause. Oh, definitely a great cause. Four Wide Nationals, do you prepare any differently for a race like this than another track somewhere else? Yeah, I mean, from the crew chief standpoint, nothing's changed. You try to run as good as you can in each condition that you, you're presented with. From a driver's standpoint, the staging deal is completely different. Uh, you have to spend a few moments looking at that Christmas tree and remembering the lanes are numbered left to right, one through four. The stage and pre-stage lights are that way. If you're in the outside lanes, right. nothing's changed. If you're in the inside lanes, you're looking across the tree and that got real confusing for a few drivers last year so you want to make sure you got that in your head what about the perspective of other cars moving on the side? that's something different after all the years of uh, yeah you know what especially in our dodges we sit so far back it's like being in the, the trunk of a car uh, it's tough to see the car in the other lane and the two racetracks are divided by another wall there so when you're staging and that light comes on, all your focus is ahead of you at your finish. Line. Tunnel vision yeah, and you're, yeah, just, not, you're tuned in. I'm not rolling the window down, checking things there and adjusting the mirror. Flipping them the thumbs up before you go. If I was flipping anything, that would be it. Right. <laughs> well, I appreciate the time with us, Jack. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, just a great weekend. I mean, if there's one race that you want to go to add to your list of been there, done, that's the four wide, that's the race. Definitely is, definitely. Cool. Thanks, man. Well, thank Take you care, for your guys. Time. Appreciate it. I'd like to welcome Doug Herbert back to Cruise Control Extreme. Doug, thanks for taking some time with us. You bet. Happy to be here with you guys. Oh, we're happy to be here for this great event. Why don't you tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about Breaks? And well, uh, you know, Breaks is a charity organization. I started a couple, uh, four years ago now, after my two sons were in a car accident that were, that were killed. And uh, we're just trying to make a difference training teenagers. And, and I've really got the support of all of our friends out here at the drag races. That's great. Uh, pretty much every pro driver came over today to help support what we're doing raise some money the schools are free for teenagers so any of your listeners that are teenagers or have teenager kids uh go on uh, you know go online to put on the breaks.org and learn a little bit about what we're doing and, and, and they can uh, set up a, an event through that if there's something that well, they want to go to they can sign up 
uh, their teenager on there, or they can do some fundraising uh, where we can take the brakes program to their town and their city. Wow, so. that's great. That's a great thing. They're pretty neat. Well, we appreciate you doing that for everybody. Yep, yep, yep. You bet. Thanks, and thanks, Cruise Control TV, uh, uh, you know, for coming out here and covering the brakes event. Uh, we wouldn't miss it at all. Awesome. Thanks for having us. I'm here with Terry McMillan, driver of the Amelie Oil Top Fuel Drag. So thank you for spending some time with us. Hey, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about your uh, team, how you're doing in points this year and how you come into this track, what your plans are. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, coming into Charlotte, we were looking we're looking for a lot of big things. It's the, First of all, it's four wides, really confusing for the drivers and even the fans sometimes, but it's great, great racing, and that's what the real cool part about that. And we need to make a move in the points right now. We're seven points out of tenth, and, and my goal this year, uh, for two years, I've fallen short of making the top ten. Uh, first year by 18 points, last year by eight. Uh, so, you know, there's no no room for failure this year. We're not, we're not going to be denied that top ten opportunity. So... We're going to go out there, we're going to continue to work hard at it and then throw everything we got at it. And uh, today we need to start doing that and start going some rounds. How's the hot rod running? Not bad for an old fat guy in a used car, I suppose. But, uh, you know, we're having a good time with it and it's running really well. And, and uh, we run really good numbers early yesterday, but down track, um, you know, a lot of us had a lot of problems. So uh, we made some adjustments and I know that NHRA spent the night working on the track last night as well. So I'm expecting really a good track today and some good conditions and I think we're going to go out there and I think you see a lot of cars in the 80s today. Excellent, excellent. Do you prepare any differently yourself for uh, the four wides compared to going to another track? Yeah, you know, I, it's, you just got to take it. You just got to race your lane. You got to look at your tree. Um, it's distracting because, you know, you got four cars going up there and trying to stage and all these lights blinking and all that. But uh, at the end of the day, focus on your lane. Drive it the way you always drive it and don't get out of your routine. Sounds good. Well, I appreciate the time with us. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I appreciate right, it. Have a great day. You too. I'd like to welcome Aaron from Simpson here to Cruise Control Extreme. Thank you for taking some time with us. Thank you for having us. No problem. Any new products you'd like to tell our viewers about? Absolutely. Here at Simpson, we're always trying to make our racers safer, give them more products, more options to choose from. One of them is the Hybrid Pro, which is a head and neck restraint. Uh, you'll see it used from the professional racer all down into the sportsman ranks. Gives you the best, con best protection on the market as well as comfort and ease of getting in and out of the car comes in two different versions the lightweight carbon fiber version seen here or a composite version that's just a little bit heavier but a lot more affordable then we also have the new FIA 8860 helmet this is a true autoclave uh, helmet meeting European 8860 specifications wow. For increased protection, it goes through uh, penetration tests, it goes through hardness tests, goes through deflection tests uh, to better protect your head. Wow. So that is the helmet to have. Mm hmm Yes, and you'll see many of the top racers wearing this helmet now. You know, all of the, everybody at John Force Racing, uh, Morgan Lucas, Brandon Bernstein, and several others. Well, we appreciate the time with us. You bet. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for choosing Simpson. We're here with Chris Clark from Cook's Headers. Thanks for coming on with us. No problem. Glad you guys were able to come by the booth. Oh, we're glad we were able to. It's the 50th anniversary of Cook's this year. Yes, it is. Uh, 50, 50 years in business. Company was started back in 1962 on Long Island, New York. We're now here in beautiful North Carolina, and we're growing leaps and bounds every day. That's good to hear. Now, you're going to be doing some work with us. We're going to be doing some installs and working on a 2009 Mustang soon, I hear. Yep, we gave you guys some product here uh, a couple days ago. Pretty excited to see you guys do the install, see what kind of power gains it picks up. And um, just really performance-oriented. So we're glad you guys are getting into that end of the market. Well, we're glad to have it, and we're glad to have you guys on board. Tell us, anything new from Cooks you want to let everybody know about? Absolutely. Actually, here at this race, we just had Don Fiesel in his Cobra Jet Stock Eliminator car going to the 8s. I think that's the first stock eliminator ever. We did a brand new set of custom headers on his car. Now they're available for production use. He picked up a bunch of horsepower. Um, we got a lot of good applications coming out every week. We just did the new uh, Boss side pipes for the 2011 Ford Coyote Cobra cars and the, and the 302 Boss cars. So we really got something for anybody now. Trucks, GM trucks, Dragsters, Ford, Chrysler, you name it, and we probably have something for it. So from production vehicles to custom vehicles, Cooks does it all. Yes, sir. We do everything, all forms of racing. Drag racing, oval racing, street cars, we can handle it. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad our uh, fans will definitely know because we have a lot of people from a lot of different genres. So, well, we appreciate you coming on with us. 
No problem. We and I'm glad to have you aboard. Thank you. If you want to see a great show, you want to know what's going on in America and maybe even around the world, on high definition, cruise control. That's where it's at. Race fans, are you looking for the best memorabilia from your favorite team or driver? Look no further. It's here at RacingMetal.com. You can find sheet metal, autograph items, and much, much more. Go to www.RacingMetal.com or call us at 973-417-2717. You can also find new and used parts for your racing car here at RacingMetal.com. That's www.RacingMetal.com. Looking for newer used parts for your race car? Look no further. Here at RaceProvenParts.com, you can find all the parts you're looking for. We have parts for all types of racers. Just go to eBay.com, click Stores, and type in Race Proven Parts. Can't find what you're looking for? Or call us at 973-417-2717. Or go to RacingMetal.com and click on the link. And if you're looking for racing memorabilia, you can also find that at RacingMetal.com. Race proven parts. Click and save. Welcome back to Cruise Control TV. Okay, so we got all our bushings and our parts and our pieces pressed in from NPD. Um, we got the conversion kit here to change the original drum brakes in the front over to disc to give us a little more stopping power because you know, some guys like me think we have to stop for some reason. Uh, we got to get these new coil springs pressed together. We've got a tool to do that with, compress the springs. We're going to try to get this thing uh, looking a little more like a car today. So you guys go check out npdlink.com and we'll see if we can't get something put together here. First thing we do is put the up control arms in place. Make sure to put the lock washers on with the bolts. The alignment shims will be done later on on the alignment rack. Make sure the bolts are all tightened before you go any further. Using a little grease on the lower control arms will make them slide into place a lot easier on the frame. You can align the lower control arm better with a punch or a filled screwdriver than you can with the bolt. Once again, don't forget to tighten the bolt securely. You will need to compress the spring before trying to put it in place. To do this, you will need a spring compressor. We went up to O'Reilly's Auto Parts to get ours. Once you have the spring compressed, you put it in place by placing the top of it into the frame and bringing the bottom control arm to hold it in place. Then you put the spindle in place by placing it on the bottom ball joint and bringing the top control arm to the top of the spindle to hold it in place. It's easier to put the nut on the bottom ball joint before trying to bring the top arm into place. Don't forget to tighten the top and the bottom ball joint castle nuts and then place the carter pin in them to hold them in place. Once all the bolts are tight, make sure to take out the spring compressing tool by unscrewing it and feeding it down through the shock hole in the bottom control arm. Using a little Loctite, put the backing plate and the brake caliber holder in place.
using the longer bolts, put the tie rod and holder in place. Don't forget to bend the bolt locks in place. Take the new bearings out of the box and pack them with grease. You can find a grease bearing packer at your local auto parts store. We got ours from the great guys over at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Put the bearings in place, making sure not to get any grease on the rotor itself. Tap the seal into place using a socket around the same size as the seal. This will keep the seal from being damaged when you're putting it in place. Slide the rotor onto the spindle, spinning it so it falls into place nicely. Then slide the front bearing and retaining ring into place. Then put the front castle bolt on, tightening it to the specs given in the kit with a torque wrench. Once the bolt is tightened down to spec, go backwards just enough to place a carter pin through the spindle. Remember to bend the end of the carter pin up so the carter pin stays in place. Then using a rubber or plastic hammer, tap on the grease cap. Place the brake shoe clip on the back of the pad that faces the caliber piston. Putting a little bit of lithium grease on the caliber pins will keep them sliding freely. Place the brake pads on the piston, putting the brake pad with the clip towards the back piston and the brake pad with the holes towards the front. Now it's time to install the brake caliber. Place the brake caliber on the spindle and place the bolts through it to hold it in place. Tighten your brake caliber down as snug as it'll go. Place one of the two brass crush washers on each side of the brake hose, then place the bolt through and attach it to the caliber. Okay, so we started out this morning with a table full of parts, and just a few short hours later what we wind up with is a front end that actually looks like it belongs on a car. Uh, we got the brake conversion kit done. Um, we're all set to go. We got the coil springs in, no problems, upper lower control arms. Uh, the only thing we have left to do now is we need to do our, our uh, steering links, uh, you know, connect the two front ends together, our drag link across the center. And uh, we're pretty much done with the front suspension. It's time to get started on the rear. This is Bobby Allison. Stay tuned for Cruise Control TV. Attention all veterans. Recently back from deployment, having trouble with the grind of everyday life? Do you want to learn the skills to ensure a successful career? Are you looking to better yourself through higher or continuing education? We have the solution. The Manpower to Horsepower Motorsports course. Educational opportunities for military veterans with physical disabilities. At Manpower to Horsepower, we have the right people to help you through everything you're going through as you learn a great career in motorsports and car restoration. Major courses in this program include Introduction to Motorsports Management Engine and Drivetrain Fundamental Motorsports Marketing Chassis Building Fabrication and much much more Call now for your information packet at 704-638-9330 Your new life starts today Call now
have transmission problems, bench-built transmissions at Kanapolis can repair any transmission, including automatic and straight drive. They also repair rear differentials and clutches. Over 30 years' experience in the business, they know how to do it right and do it right the first time. They're located on Highway 29 in Kanapolis, just a short distance from Concord or China Grove. Bench Belt's transmissions is knocking out the competition. So if you're having transmission problems, come see Chuck and all the gang at Bench Built Transmissions, 704-933-8727. I'm the parent of two sons that drive every day. Don't let your parents receive the phone call that Doug got last year. Last year my two boys were killed in a car accident while they were driving fast, less than a mile from the house. There is a place to drive fast, and that's right out here where Clay and I do, at the drag strip. Go to PutOnTheBrakes.org to download a safe driving contract and learn what you can do to be a safer driver. I'm NASCAR driver Kenny Wallace, and you're watching Cruise Control TV. Welcome to another edition of Cruise Control Extreme and the Mustang Corral. We're here today at Pro Dino in Fort Mill, South Carolina, with our 2009 Mustang GT project car. She's a 4.6 liter, and the last time we put her on the dyno, she put out about 268 horsepower. Today, we're going to do some modifications and show you how you can get more power from your car without sacrificing the gas mileage. We're going to be putting in a JLT cold air intake system and tuning it. We showed you the last time in the Mustang Corral. We've also got a Cooks, Headers, H-Pipe, and High Flow Cat system to get a little bit more power out of her. We're going to put her back on the dyno, see what she can do. We're inside Pro Dyno for another edition of the Mustang Corral. Today we've got our 2009 Mustang GT, and we're going to be putting a new exhaust system on her. Paul, what parts are we using today? We're installing Cook's long tube headers and a high flow H pipe with high flow catalytic converters. Now, boys and girls, this is not something that you want to try at home. Why is that, Paul? You uh, need a lot of room to work around underneath the car whenever you do this, so it's not something I recommend doing on your garage floor. All right, let's get to it. Okay, the first thing you need to do is disconnect the battery so you don't short out the computer. Then remove the battery holder so that you have more room to get to where the manifolds are. Next, take the bolt out of the dipstick holder and take the dipstick out completely. You're going to want to unplug and take out all the electronics that are on the shaft tower. They're going to be in the way when you try to get the headers in. Next, take all the bolts out of the top of the exhaust manifolds. They'll be a lot easier to reach from up here. Next, unbolt the steering column. This will have to be taken completely out of the way in order to get the exhaust manifolds out and the new headers in. Next, take the bolt out of the motor mounts because they'll have to be taken completely out to reach the manifold. You will have to completely remove the starter in order to get the exhaust manifolds out and the new headers in. Next, you'll have to remove the two bolts from the manifold to the engine pipes. We'll be replacing these pipes with an X-pipe and high-flow cats. Unbolt all the old O2 sensors. There are two different types, one with blue wires and one with green wires. These are the actual oxygen sensors and are identified by the green plug. And these are the actual aftercat catalytic monitors that are identified by the blue plug. And we're going to reuse these once we get the new system in. Now it's time to take all the rest of the bolts out of the old exhaust manifolds. Be careful not to have it drop out of the car onto you. Next, remove the studs that hold in the old exhaust manifolds. You'll be replacing these with bolts given to you with the Cook's headers. Next place, the exhaust gaskets in place. Put in the bottom bolts a few turns just to hold them in place. As you can see, the new Cook's headers have a lot less room to work with. 
Be very careful not to damage the bottom bolts that are holding in the gaskets. Try to sneak your hands up and put the bolts in and snug them down. Make sure to put the upper and the lower bolts in place before you start tightening any of them down. Now it's time to put back in the motor mounts. This is going to be a lot trickier than taking them out. Now that we've got the headers in on both sides, we're going to reattach the starter. And we've already put the engine ground back in, so we're going to bring the car down. We'll put the bolts in the top, bring it back up again, then we'll be ready to do the H-pipe. Now don't forget to reinstall the steering shaft. The last step now is to reconnect our original O2 sensors to the new headers, and then we'll be ready to bring the car back down. Now that we've got the car lowered, we're going to go ahead and tighten the upper header bolts. Now that we've got all the upper bolts in, the motor mounts are back on, and we've reattached the battery, it's time to raise the car back up. We're going to get the dipstick back in place, and then we're going to put the H-pipes on. It's easier to assemble the H-pipe and the cats on the ground and then feed them in. You're going to need a second person to help you with this part of the install. Reattach the old exhaust system to the new exhaust system. Don't forget to tighten everything down good before you let the car down. Now we're going to reinstall the rear O2 sensors, also known as the cat monitors. Before letting the car down, make sure everything is tight and level. Now we're ready to install our new JLT cold air intake system. Then we're going to turn it over to Dan to get a tune, then after that, we're going to put in the Cook's headers and high flow exhaust system. You ready to go, Paul? Let's go. All right. Good. Okay, we're going to be taking off the old cold air intake system. And Paul, what's the first step of getting this old baby off? Uh, first step is unplug the mass air meter. And then we will unhook the PCV system. And we'll take the old hose clamps off. Pull the air filter off of it. And lastly, we'll pull the shield off of it. There we go. And that's all it takes to get the old one out. Now we're going to put the new one in. First thing we're going to need to do is install the heat shield. Place the intake tube in place and tighten it down with a socket driver. Remember the intake tube is only made of plastic, so don't over tighten it. Remember to reconnect the airflow sensor. Slip on the new air filter and tighten it down. Measure and cut the PCV line and then install it in place. And that's all there is to it. Once you give it the tune, it'll increase your horsepower. Now that we've got our cold air intake system in, we've got to tune it or the car won't even run properly. Dan, tell us about how this tune's going to work. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to recalibrate your mass air so that it matches up with the air intake that you've installed on the vehicle. Um, we're also going to change the uh, pattern of flow across your, air, or your O2 sensors so that your, your headers will be set up properly in the tune as well. So basically you're saying we're going to teach the computer how to use the new air to fuel ratios that we're going to be getting. Exactly. Wonderful. Well, let's go for it. SCT makes some of the best tuners. You can find all the different models at sctflash.com. That's www.sctflash.com.
Now this is how the car is supposed to sound. Now that we've got her tuned up, we're going to put her on the dyno and see how much power we have. We got here this morning to Pro Dino. Our 2009 Mustang GT was making around 268 horse at the rear wheels. But now that we've put a JLT cold air intake system and put some new Cooks headers and an H pipe on, we're making over 308 horsepower at the rear wheels and 328 foot pounds of torque. It's amazing numbers. Now, stay tuned for more from the Mustang Corral, and we'll teach you more about how to get more power from your Mustang. Welcome back to Cruise Control Extreme. We're here at the Red Robin in beautiful Ballantyne at the first cruise in. Patrick, tell us a little bit about how this came about. Well, I met Vince at Pro Dino, and I was getting my car dyno, and we started talking. I always wanted to have a, a cruise in at my restaurant. Uh, he had some connections and be able to set it up for us, so we went ahead and got it set up for us. Uh, and we also run some contests also. Um, we, do, we give away gift cards and whoever the crew's in with the most uh, people from their car club, we give them a 10% discount for uh, as many people as they can get here. So definitely bring your car club down here if you want a discount on some amazing hamburgers. Now what kind of car do you drive, Patrick? I drive a 2010 Mustang GT. Very good. Now are we going to see that out here? Not today. All right. Well, how often are we having these cruise ins? Uh, every fourth Tuesday of the month. And what time does it start? At 6 p.m. Great. So everybody come down here, 6 o'clock, the fourth Tuesday of every month. If your car club brings the most people, you're going to get a discount on some amazing food. I think we have a chicken behind us. <laughs> I'm here with Kelly with Power Curve Motorsports, and your club has brought the most cars out here tonight, so you're going to get a discount on your food. But tell us a little bit more about Power Curve Motorsports. Power Curve Motorsports is here in Charlotte, and we were founded on the four principles of faith, family, friends, and fun. We enjoy showing off of our, our vehicles and helping our friends optimize their combinations with their cars. Uh, be sure to check out our online parts mega store coming soon. Check us out on Facebook at PowerCurveMotorsports.com. Be sure to check our calendar for more updates. Fabulous, Kelly. Well, thanks so much. And which one of these vehicles is yours? This Shelby here and this Expedition here. Got Beautiful. One. Beautiful car. Thanks so much, Kelly. Thank you. We're here with Richard and his amazing 1968 Citroën. Richard, tell us a little bit about this unique car. You know, I don't know where to start, really. Uh, it's, I think it's the most remarkable car ever made in the world. Uh, the headlights turn with the steering. The uh, it rides on air. The suspension is self-leveling has a front crumple zone, the engine goes underneath the car in the event of a crash. I mean, you can just go on and on. Aluminum and fiberglass body panels. It was manufactured to tolerances of microns. It's a, it's a remarkable car. Now, how long have you had it? Three years. Now, the inside of this car is really amazing. You've got to check out these seats because these are couches inside this car. It's probably the most comfortable car I have ever sat in. You've even got a little tiny model car in the front headlights. What's that for? Well, you know, it's just for the novelty effect, but uh, Citroen thought of everything. There is actually a little door that opens up into that compartment, so you can reach in there and wipe out the inside of the headlights. And, of course, I put my little toy car in there that I got from France at Champs-Élysées many years ago. So that little car did not come stock with the big car? I'm afraid that was an optional extra. I wasn't willing to pay for it at the time. <laughs> Aftermarket. Well, thanks so much, Richard. We appreciate the information. This is an amazing vehicle. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Show it to you. And I'm sneaking up here on Robert. And Robert, you're going to be doing a little bit of work with Cruise Control on some technology segments, aren't you? Uh, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, we're looking uh, looking forward to doing some, some different projects and uh, 
different kind of cars and things. I've been approached with uh, a couple different uh, things that they were talking about working with. So we'll see what how is it time progresses. See how you know things go. Now, what types of cars do you have experience working on? Uh, majority Ford. My, myself, majority Ford. I'm uh, definitely a car enthusiast, but my education, I would have to say, is definitely the Ford stuff. So we can call you the Mustang Doctor. I don't know about a Mustang doctor, but uh, definitely a Mustang fan. <laughs> That's for sure. There's no doubt there. Well, that sounds great, Robert. We look forward to working with you. Yeah, great. I look forward to you working with you guys, too. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Cruise Control Extreme. Don't forget to visit us on the web at cruisecontroltv.com or find us on Facebook at Cruise Control Extreme. And don't forget to listen to me, the car chick, on the America's Garage radio show on ESPN 730 AM in Charlotte or visit us on the web at americasgaragesho.com. Remember, buckle up, be safe, and keep it on cruise control.